Hello, hi, how are you? How's it going? Happy Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or whenever you listen to this podcast. I hope you're having a fantastic day. This is Kevin Garcia and you're listening to another episode of A Tiny Revolution, a podcast about ordinary folks living revolutionary lives. I do not actually have any sort of announcements this week. Can you believe? Not much is going on. We're wrapping up July. We're getting ready to head into August. So I guess the only thing I'm really announcing is just to be on the lookout for some new e-courses. I'm currently in the process of creating um, a course I'm calling the Big Queer Bible Study because I'm noticing that within our community, there's still a good number of people who get hung up on the clobber passages, people who still get hung up on proof texting, you know, is it okay to be gay? Is it okay to be trans? Is it okay to, you know, have a gender expression that's beyond the binary? And I want to help people navigate that without having to uh, look to another resource or look to another person. I've walked through this. I've talked this way a thousand times. And I also know that just because you understand the Bible doesn't mean you're going to accept yourself. So this class is not only just about learning how to talk about the Bible and LGBTQ inclusion, it's really about learning how to talk to yourself, learning how to trust yourself and trust God in you as an LGBTQ person or progressive person learning to own their faith. So make sure you're over on, uh, make sure you're on my subscriber list, which is at thekevingarcia.com slash subscribe lots of s's in there wow um but that's gonna be coming out next month and i hope that you'll join me for that it's gonna be an incredible time today on the podcast i have my friend joe minor join me joe is an internet human that i met on twitter and one of his first tweets i saw was just like i'm about to be your new fave and i'm just like you know what joe you write Joe is, Joe Minor, excuse me, yeah, Joe Minor is a writer and anti-racist LGBTQ plus advocate from upstate New York. His blog started out as a space for him to process the ever-developing ideas and the variety of social issues and ideal theological ideas that came to him and continues today as an LGBTQ resource for queer folks and people of color navigating spirituality in a society that does not center them. And the big thing he believes is that if you feel discomfort, that you need to press into that discomfort and learn to understand your misunderstandings. Ugh, he's so wonderful, he's so good, and also just really, really, you know, not bad to look at. Eh, he shaved his head, it's a look, mama. Uh. Anyways, grab yourself something to drink, pull in a friend, and let's enjoy this conversation with our new internet friend, our BFF, Joe Miner. My name is Joe, and I work in a button factory, first and foremost. Um, what? You work in a button factory? No, I wish I did. No. Oh, God actually, damn no, it. I really, actually, in this economy, in the way people mm. and workers are treated, probably not a button factory. Um, yeah. But, um, no. <laughs> so, you deserve better, for sure. Thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. By day, I do, like, customer service training in a call center setting. Um, Yo, so I, I've actually been there, done that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I worked for Ferguson Inter Enterprises for uh, a year and a half. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Oh, work inside sales associate. Thank you for calling Ferguson Enterprises. This yes. is Kevin. I can help you. Yes. Oh my gosh, I love it. Ugh, my um, life. But there's also like a lot. Oh. Anyway, that's a call center jobs are a lot. Um, they really fortunately are. I don't, so I work with like medical billing, but don't mm -hmm. really work with medical billing anymore. I mostly just tell reps when they're not doing well as like customer service people, which is mm. a time, nice. um, but I love it so far. Um, and then by, I, I want to say by night, but it's really like while I'm working, I blog and I write stuff about oh my, my life. Dude, I did, I did yes, 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 me too. I did the I did same the thing. thing. Yeah, oh my goodness. I love that. And honestly, uh, yeah, it's like, I am i don't know. It's one of those really weird things. Well, weird good, but um, it's... When I, when I meet people for the first time, I don't want to be like, hi, so I'm a writer... And they're like, oh, so you have like paid things, right? And I'm just like, uh, well, I have this free blog that nobody gives me money for right now. So <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Exactly. Um, Listen, you know, dream it, believe it, achieve it. It's what my exactly. old teacher 
there was a professor in my mm-hmm. undergrad. I got my degree in music ed. His name was Keith Coster. And Keith Coster was this like beautiful, flamboyant, like middle aged, like at first glance, he looks very frumpy. But then you okay. start talking, you're like, oh my gosh, you're the best. But he would, uh, he would always say, listen, you got to tell those kids, dream it, believe it, achieve it. And that's what I'm going to say to you. Thank you. Pick up that oh. clarinet. Yeah. Get back to work. <laughs> I appreciate it. Oh my goodness. And that's so funny too, because um, I think something, so I've sort of uh, Twitter stalked and creeped on you for a long time. Um, and that's so sweet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's something that I always feel like I related to from a distance. Cause I'm watching you do a lot of like just building your own platforms and creating your own stuff and your own resources and, um, it seems very DIY and that's what I want to be doing mm. on my own little corner of the world is to say like, you know what, like I maybe don't have all of the connections I need right now, but I will obtain those connections and I will just do it and I'll work on something and figure it out. Um, while I'm also doing my call center job. So, yeah. Um, Listen, yeah. there is no, uh, my mama always told me there is nothing wrong with paying your bills. Exactly. 100%. So, and, and girls got bills to pay. Yeah. It was one of those things. I used to be really down on myself because I was managing a restaurant for about a year and some mm-hmm. change. And I was just like really upset. I was like, I can't believe I'm back here again. And, uh, I was like lamenting. I'm just like, because I thought at this point in my life, I was going to be a pastor yeah. and all these other things. Yeah. And then my friend Miles sat me down and sang me this song. Are you ready to hear it? Oh, it's I'm pretty ready. Great. I'm ready. She said, you are from an America. Um, <laughs> hold on, I can do this. <laughs> nice start. He said, <laughs> he said, you are from a marginalized community. And that means that you are going to have a harder time. If you were straight and cisgender, you would be a pastor, but she wouldn't be my friend. Hey! Wow. <laughs> I love, I mean, um, I... But that's the damn truth. Like That's the damn if, truth. I just dabbed on that like six times. Um, but I come really on, we live that. for a dab. You know, that's so true, though. Can uh, I just say, I really would like to be friends with you. You sound so, like, you were so fun. I, can just, <laughs> I appreciate I just, that. I just feel this vibe. Oh, good. I, that makes me happy. I try yeah. to be okay. friendly. Well, you're friendly and you're funny. So Perfect. Two on two. Work. Um, so uh, I saw a blog you posted the other day. And like uh, kind of a lot of the stuff that you've been talking about on Twitter mm-hmm. lately has been like what it was like transitioning from uh, being someone who identified as celibate or a side B Christian, yeah. side B gay Christian, toward... Uh, you know, embracing your sexual identity and I don't want to say switching sides because yeah. that feels weird right. these days, but it's just like your, your mind changed about this. Yeah, absolutely. So can you, uh, I would love for you to like, how long ago was that? What was yeah. the thing that made you change your mind? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the, in, what I would, or I guess what a lot of people would notice as like the quote unquote switch was not that long ago um Mm. like we're talking like november of this past year Um, rock and roll scorpio season came into it (laughs) um but i think the wheels were turning for a lot longer than i wanted to admit um Mm, so i mean i grew up not in church at all and Mm. then i became exposed to church and um, really connected with who Jesus is. And, but it was really complicated at the same time because my only exposure to Jesus was this very institutionalized homophobic Jesus. Like the first Sunday that I spent in a church service, um, the preacher from the pulpit said something to the effect of like, if, if anyone who has homosexuality like is being oppressed by demonic forces and, it was, Goddamn. Yeah, it was very, very conservative, charismatic, um, very much that kind of situation. Um, and I knew that that wasn't right, but at mm. the same time, I really believed in Jesus and who I understood Jesus to be, which was mm-hmm. this person of full compassion and this person of full mm. mercy and humility and someone that really resonated 
who it fully embodied the outcast, the marginalized, the um, people mm. who are considered less than. Um, right. But again, unfortunately, my only exposure to Jesus was through this institutionalized, conservative, um, right. sort of, you know, all American red blooded lens. Yeah. Um, and so I tried to pick my way through that as best as possible. Um, and that kind of landed me at sort of and a... How old are you at this point, if I don't... You yeah, don't sure, asking. I'm 23. Okay, at this point. Yeah, so... Or no, no, not right oh, now. No, 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 right now I'm 23. Then I was 15. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Just framing it up in my mind. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, and so... Kind of absorbing as much Jesus as I could through that lens kind of landed me to a side B position um, mm. around, I'd say like, a, you know, cause there was definitely a period of time where I was fully like, well, like I'm not gay. I'm same sex attracted and that whole <laughs> um, life. Yeah. That was me too. I yeah. was like, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely just same sex attracted. Right. And I just feel like my destiny is to marry a woman. Yes. You know, I had prophecies in the whole nine on mine. Oh Lord. Yeah. I'm wow. Um, fortunately nobody prophesied for a wife or even a spouse for me. I, maybe people, I don't know. There was a lot of prophecy that happened in between that time period. So <laughs> I'm sure somebody somewhere was saying Joe's going to yeah. get married to a woman someday. Yeah. Um, LOL. But um, Also, though, for those of you out there listening and just like, what the fuck are they talking about? In we mean by prophecy is like people would literally like lay hands on you yes. and say like, I see for you a woman in white waiting for you <laughs> to just remain faithful and walk towards her in Jesus name. Yes. Oh, my and, like, goodness. So if you're triggered right now, I'm sorry. If you are enlightened right now, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a whole vibe, um, but it's not a vibe, but it's a vibe. Um, like I mean, a, it's a vibe. It's just not the vibe correct, I want to be correct, in. Correct, yes. Right. Um, yeah, and so, um, shoot. Yeah, so anyhow, so I kind of came to a side B position. I read... Um, Wesley Hill's book, um, Spiritual Friendship. And mm -hmm. that was really impactful. And I think there are still lots of pieces of that that are still very impactful for me, especially right. in regards to how side B folks and celibate folks understand chosen family and friendship and relationships mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, but I think for me at the time, because I don't know, so the silly thing, well, it's not silly, but the interesting thing is in my life is that I didn't grow up in church, but the time that I did spend in church, I feel like I got enough church baggage, um, mm -hmm. you know, that I could have grown up in church. Um, oh, yeah. Those you were know. your spongy years. Yeah, exactly. And those are the times where I was really looking for, you know, going to church, being a gay kid, not fitting in in school anywhere. I was kind of like, well, maybe this is my thing. Um, yeah. Gosh, know. yes. Same. Yeah. Uh isn't that hard? It's, like, it's so hard because, ugh. like, at school, like, I'm, like, everybody sees the sparkle, Kevin. We know you're gay, yes. but, like, everyone's not talking about it because it's still not cool to be gay in high school yet. Right. And then on top of that, like, you're also known as the church kid. Wow. Yep, exactly. Very bad. <sighs> it's it's yeah. a lot to balance. Um, and so, yeah, and I think a lot of what am I trying to say here? I think a lot of what drew me to a sort of more side B perspective is, was sort of um, kind of coming out of that fear of identifying as gay. Um, and that even took mm -hmm. a lot of people just being like, Joe, you can identify however the hell you want and it does not matter. Um, and a lot right. of people being really upset with me because I just was not getting it. Um, but, um, Wait, like not get like, get like people like, telling you like, you can just be gay and you're just like, no, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like my storytelling abilities are like, I start from like a to C and then I go to like a again and uh, any all over, but, um, listen, but, it's no, you're fine. Yeah. Perfect. Um, no, but yeah, like, um, I had a lot of 
a lot of influences, a lot of people speaking into my life around the same time. And so I had read um, Spiritual Friendship around the same time. Um, also, this is a really important um, sort of piece to everything, is that I went to um, Christian college, uh, very Ooh-hoo! rural, very conservative, the whole shebang. Um, and Which so, one was it? Ho in college. I don't know if you know her. Um, she's a very tiny... Um, Western New York Christian mm. school. Um, Sounds like a dream. Yeah, it's something. Or um, a nightmare. I don't know. You know, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> you know, we, we'll figure it out. We'll, yeah. We'll, <laughs> we're in um, therapy for it. Exactly. Exactly. What was your, uh, what was your undergrad in? Communication. Like your ah, so yes. no Bible degree. Correct. I mean, I did take theology courses. Jokes on the, well, uh, I will say the professors that I really connected with um, seemed to not want to indoctrinate me. However, um, I will say that the joke is on that college because I feel like they send, I feel like any Christian college send, pushes people towards like Bible degrees and theology majors and things like that. Right. Sort of with the idea that like, oh, we're going to turn them out to be just the way that we do theology, um, but except... Uh, they just gave me tools to do theology, and I just kind of became radicalized from that. So, um, Isn't that interesting? It's like, yeah. my problem is that, like, not that I don't love, it's like, it's not that I didn't listen to what you said. It's like, I did listen to what you said. Yes, exactly. It's yes. Like, it's like, my problem is that I don't believe God loves me. It's like, it's that I actually believe that God does. Right. Fool. Right. And then you just take that to the, like, conclusion of what that means if god loves me then what does that mean for the rest of my life um, uh, you know yes. like if i so once you understand that truth it's so much more freeing because you don't have to sort of fit into this whole mm-hmm. like well i'm just gonna you know do wesleyan theology or i'm just gonna do like whatever the hell theology that tells me that i'm not a valid person that i'm not worthy of being loved yeah. or whatever it's like, um, I think what a lot of people misunderstand about, um, I think any non-affirming position is like, uh, I don't know, it, it feels like it just, uh, the, I think the premise is wrong. Yes. Like, yeah. it starts from a premise that um, our desire isn't natural. Right. And I think that's like where everyone has to come to common ground. On is like because if you can start from that place, you can actually have a conversation. Because yeah. if you still believe it's not natural, then you have more. Like we have to get there first. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's not really. I think. It, I mean, I think it really comes. I think that is similar with like any conversation about marginalized identities. If mm. you're not, if you're not defining things the same way, if you're not coming to this one conclusion of that, you know either our desires are natural um, or, you know, when I think of in terms of like conversation about racial justice, like, Mm -hmm. you know, if you don't believe that all people actually do deserve justice, then, you know, (laughs) like we're just not going to agree Mm because I'm not going to sit here and and debate my, I'm not going to debate my existence. Yeah. It's like, I'm not going to sit here and debate like, it's like it's very interesting where like people are just like or they're like really down with racial justice yeah. and not with queer justice and yes. it's like you do know that that there's gay black folks right right there's and some trans, of trans the... a lot of trans black people too so like right. I think IDK. in TBH like queer trans black people are really fundamental to queer visibility today and Integral, racial like, and racial justice as well. And like, you know, so, it, you know, without, because that's just the interesting thing too, because I think a lot of people want to just split these things up into clean cut things like, well, we'll just talk about racial justice and we don't have to think about queer or trans people. Um, but it's like, well, actually, you know, our queer, uh, queer people of color activists were also racial activists as well. So it's not, right. you can't just erase that. You can't just decide mm-hmm. that, uh which which parts of history are going to be uh, favorable to you. I mean, I guess depending on who wrote the history, you can mm-hmm. pick the history to be favorable to you as people do all the time. But I mean, you, you can shouldn't. do that, but it also means you're a trash human and you need to get your shit together. Right, exactly. You know? So I mean, like, you know, to me, you know, 
It just got a, well, a way I don't think options. everyone's trash. It's just that, like, <laughs> you yeah. could do better. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and can, and that's really the thing, too. It's, like, live into your potential, people. Come on. I know. That's the thing. It's, like, I talked. I was talking to someone today. I'm just, like, uh, and I was, like, when are you going to follow Jesus out of the places that hurt you and away from this false God yes. of, of people who claim to love you but don't? Yeah, absolutely. It's, like... It's wild to me. Yeah. I, I do want to hone in on something that mm-hmm. I was uh, you were talking about yes. on the blog the other day, and it's yes. like about what you learned from mm-hmm. uh, from things like spiritual friendship and yeah. a lot of the concepts therein. Because um, I was in that world too, yeah. and like the, I think that there is so much power, like just like like if you can get past like some of the principles, like yeah. the the bones of it are really good. Right. Right. So I was wondering, like, for you, like, when you're thinking about ideas from, like, side B theology mm-hmm. or even spiritual friendship, what were the things that were actually uh, beneficial for you in yeah. thinking about relationships? Absolutely. Well, so I think one of the most important things to me has been the dismantling of the idea that romantic relationships are the be-all, end-all center of your life because mm-hmm. they're not. And yeah. I think when you try to make them the center of your universe, those, the, sorry, well, voice crack, those relationships become a lot more shallow and um, mm-hmm. a lot more strained because one person cannot hold you forever. Um, and they can't hold, they can't possibly hold every single part of you either. Um, and so I love, love that emphasis in the side B world of just remembering mm-hmm. the fact that there are, a plethora of kinds of relationships that you need. It's not just about getting mm-hmm. this like traditional family model. You need a well-balanced um, circle and well-balanced uh, network of relationships to have. Mm-hmm. And I think that has given me a lot of tools to create more well, healthy relationships today. Um, mm-hmm. You know, now I'm dating someone now and, yeah. Like, I think my relationship with my boyfriend is really not healthy just because of what I've learned, because obviously it takes two to tango. Um, but I think on my part of the deal anyway, I think it's a lot, I have a lot more to give because I'm not expecting this person to be everything for me. I know mm-hmm. that they're limited and I know yeah. that um, I can't be there for him in every single way that he needs me to be. And that doesn't mm-hmm. make either of us lesser partners. That just makes us realistic people, uh, humans that just are flawed and um, have faults, and that's okay. Yeah, I. Um, that is something that like I did. I used to be like I was throwing babies out with bathwater, like yeah, among the first part of my journey, and so. Uh, my friend Miles um, really reminded me about a lot of like the wonderful principles that kind of come from that kind of community. And it really is about, um, I think it all, honestly, it goes back to decentering whiteness and right. decentering the het- cis heteronormativity of yes. the world we present. And so um, in my field of practical theology that I study, we always ask the question is who is left out of the assessment? Mm. Um, and then also like, what is the fruit of the practice? It's like a dance between um, performance and critique. Right. And so I think what queerness does a really good job of is it like it breaks down all of these different binaries, um, including ones that we just assume are quote unquote normal when there's normative, like marriage. Right. And the, right. the, 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 the uh, what is it? Not platonic family. The um, atomic. Family to, oh, atomic, I don't know. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I it's the no one that the normal, the what's considered the normal family. Uh, oh, um, nuclear. Is that what we're talking about? Like the normal, quote the nuclear quote, family. Like, yeah, the nuclear family. Yeah. yeah see, the there we go. Yeah, 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 nuclear family. Yeah, 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 nuclear family. Okay, now we know what we're talking about. Now we know. What we're talking um, about. <laughs> but they, we assume like this, but like the nuclear, nuclear family is this end all be all, and that again, like this is like that. That's normal. And so, and so what um, um, I, think I think I've been, like, as I've been, like, like engaging in my own work and becoming, like, further and further anti-establishment. So mm-hmm. shout out to Dr. Robin for that. <laughs> um, but it, I, I've, I've come up against the same question with um, relationships. A few years ago, I went to this really great workshop and they asked the question, uh, what if we treated our lovers more like our friends and our friends more like our lovers? Wow. And it was like, what if I, you know... 
like it's assumed that my lover is entitled to my body and sex and my money and my time and my loyalty. And then it was just like, well, what if like my friend, like I gave my friend my time and like set aside something special for them. Yeah. What if I gave them, you know, what if I remembered special holidays for us? What if we went on dates because right. like, you know, we wanted to be spend time with each other. And then like with our lovers, like, you know, something I do with my friends is I tell them the truth all the time about mm. everything including when I'm annoyed with my lover. Yes. So like, what if I was like deathly honest with my lover and said, hey, like, this doesn't feel good. Or hey, like, I need something more from you. Or hey, like, this isn't working. You know? Yeah, like absolutely. It, absolutely. And so it, it really like, I think that, and so like when I like, when I remember these ideas from, you know, this these principles of spiritual friendship, it's like, you like they were attempting to create but like what audrey lord would call it like beloved community right definitely absolutely uh yeah and and that's i think i don't know and that's really the hard thing because like you said i think the, the way you said i think was really good um you know side b the side b life side b theology has good bones um, it's just that it's just like some of the meat on those bones is a little not, rotten. not doing so well. <laughs> yeah. Cause like, you know, like it's like, if there's anything that I could like point to, to say, you know what? Like, I don't want to say there's something re redemptive, but it's like, it just proves to me. I'm like, Oh, that's gospel right there. Yes. Which means I'm just like, look for Jesus everywhere. People. Right. Absolutely. Oof. Yeah. And honestly, and I really think that those pieces, when you, when you find those pieces of Jesus um, in places that when you look back, you, so mm -hmm. for me, like, I don't, I don't carry regret for being in the side B life or, and I don't carry regret for being a part of that world. Um, but at the same time, when I look back on it, it's not something that I want to venture into any further, but at the yeah. same time, retrospectively, I can look back and see the pieces that I was following Jesus and seeing Jesus in those moments and those spaces, mm -hmm. um, I think for me has led me into a much more, uh, what I would consider a fulfilling place right now, because I was able to follow those pieces of Christ that I saw to be, um, you know, radically relational, um, unconditionally loving took those mm. pieces and you know um was able to recognize that jesus doesn't change i mean there are pieces you know that could be a whole conversation too but like i don't mm. i think jesus is consistent um oh, yes and like when what i'm seeing the thing that was really hard for me about the side b community and like the side b life and um is is the fact that we would, I think there's such an emphasis on Jesus having compassion for those who are single and who don't fit into the nuclear family model and, mm -hmm. um, you know, taking everybody in a spittable open table, but those concepts are not translated when it comes to, um, just a simple concept of who we love or how we identify. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that is kind of, something that I've realized and I, I think I just wanted to continue following Jesus into those spaces of mm -hmm. endless hospitality, endless mercy for all people. And, Ugh. um, not just saying like, well, you know, like Jesus has mercy for these things, but not those things. Um, mm -hmm. like I, I think Jesus <laughs> is mercy. Like maybe it's like a weird and heretical idea, but I think Jesus is mercy is boundless. And at what the end of the a concept, you know, like, isn't that right? Isn't that wacky to think, um, <laughs> you know, we, we go to church and, you know, we'll sing like, you know, if grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. But unless you want to marry someone of the same gender or unless um, mm -hmm. you, your gender identity, your gender expression does not <clears throat> fit what everyone else uh, has wanted for you. You know, what's so interesting about that line that just crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. It's like, I do like the imagery of just like being like so enwrapped in something, but I'm thinking if I'm sinking in an ocean, that feels very scary to me. Yeah. 
And so it's like, what if that's like, if, if grace is an ocean, the world singing is like, oh, you guys, you're not actually in an ocean of grace. You're in an ocean of your own shit, of your own shame. So yeah. just like, and so what if me, what if like, you know, we're not supposed to sink in the water. We're supposed to walk on it, bitches. Yes. Oh, come on. Yes. Ah! We came to bring you a sermon. Ah, wow. wow. Come on, Jesus. Uh, oh, my word. But that's the thing is like, yeah. you know, like it, it's there's like these very interesting, like we have like all these very interesting like metaphors like that I think like when I actually put myself in them, they, they kind of weird me out just a little bit. Yeah. Um, now, granted, I'm going to sing the damn song because she loves us. Oh, how she loves yes. us. <laughs> and it's like, I I wonder if like that sometimes like, it's like some people, they don't need to drown in something. They need to like, they need a, a life raft. They need yes. to like, because like for them, it's just like grace is an ocean I'm seeing. It's like, if this is grace, it doesn't feel good. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's, it's like, it's, so it's always like, I think like, who's singing the song in some way. Yeah. You know, because if you and me are singing it, like, it's like, yeah, absolutely. Like, I really do feel that. But if you are in a church where you're not welcomed or there's a part of you that is continuously silenced or in any other, like, whether it's your family or your friend group or, like, wherever it is, and you just feel continually, like, smothered um, or drowned, like, you're drowning, and you keep singing, well, grace is an ocean, we're all singing, it's like, no, 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 it's like you're saying, like, I think there's this idea that we get mixed up in our head that like grace feels painful. Right. Or that it's like to, to be a recipient of grace, I must suffer in some way. Yeah, right? totally. <sighs> and I think that's a really damaging idea because, so I think, and this is something I think about a lot, but I think that um, cis hat white culture needs mm. suffering in their theology a little bit because they don't, understand what it means to suffer simply for being who Mm. you are. Um, You know, obviously all people experience suffering. However, the Mm -hmm. suffering that majority culture experiences, Mm. it's not, it's, it's a different kind of suffering. Um, And I don't want to, and I don't want to say that that kind of suffering is invalid, but it is a different experience to suffer because your, your wrists are a little limp or you walk with a little sachet. Um, it's a mm-hmm. different kind of suffering to, you know, for me to, as a child, not have any queer color, queer people of color to look at on mm-hmm. the TV or listen to on the radio. Um, mm-hmm. Like that is a different kind of suffering because I do, I never experienced seeing myself in anybody before. Um, yeah. And when you are erased from a society, that that's a different kind of suffering. And so I think majority culture needs suffering a little bit because they genuinely don't have that mm-hmm. depth of that experience. But when you're talking yeah. about marginalized communities, when you're talking about how to, you know, and I think it's such like a, like a 2010 sort of like <laughs> evangelical idea to like make the gospel relevant, but like... You know, I mean, you, but honestly, but honestly, but like, it, but it's true though. Like, if you want to make the gospel relevant to people who are marginalized in this context, you can't emphasize suffering because we know what it is to suffer. You don't have to tell me to suffer. Mm-hmm. I have suffered. Yeah, it's just like I, that's what I think is so interesting i mean like it's always like we never like the stories that are the most if this has been like someone else pointed this out but the stories that interest us the most are not the person who's just like i was born into a wealthy family and then i I was able to grow my business and then i just became the president of the united (laughs) states but i'm an idiot and i can't handle coronavirus because i'm an idiot Uh, not that we know somebody no i I can't think of anybody yeah but that's not an interesting story though yeah it's like, that is not the interesting story. That's right. like, we see that and it's just like, that is infuriating. Yes, absolutely. And so the stories that actually move us and change us are the ones where it's like, um, I like, you know, the story is like, I, every single queer person who has thought about or attempted to take their life. Yeah. And chose and somehow stuck around. Yeah. That is the story I am interested in hearing. Absolutely. Because like, to us, it's just like, to come to the end of your, like, I remember like, I mean, I think about myself, I should be dead twice, you know? Yeah. And it's like, 
and then so, like somehow I'm still here. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it, that, it's like, I, I know what it is to not want to live. And yeah. now I know what it is like to really want to live. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. And that's the, you know, oh, that's so good. And like, honestly, like, I love queer people because like, that's you the too. resurrection story that I really need to hear. And I think that everybody needs to hear mm -hmm. um, is being able Ooh, to walk a... from death to life. And we know about that already. All yeah, it's like I think for so many of us, it's like we, you know, Richard War calls it like the first and second half of life. Like you know, when you start moving, like from like trying to figure out your purpose and then living from your purpose in some way. Yeah, I feel like because of my queerness, like I was able to, I don't know, like I I finally realized what's valuable to me. Yeah. Because like I know I I recognize how very very fragile my life is. Absolutely. Mm. Definitely. So what else about you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my um goodness. I uh first of all, thank you for sharing all of that. Ah, uh, that's just like delicious. I love diving into the deep end about yes. like, relational theory and whatnot. Um so uh, where do you live in the country? Yeah, so I'm in upstate New York. Um, I live in the Albany, New York area. Um, so it's like, I don't know. It's not it's not so upstate that we, we're picking apples, but it's not <laughs> New York City at all. Um, mm -hmm. But it's like, it's its own little thing. Is it a cute little town? Do you enjoy it? I do. Um, Albany is called Smallbany sometimes because like, it's a city, but also it feels like a small town in a lot of ways. Um, like mm -hmm. you run into the same people all the time over and over again. Um, yeah. But I like it. I mean, this is where I grew up, really, this whole area. Um, mm -hmm. I used to kind of dread being here because oh. when I, I mean, when I left for college and then after that, I was thinking like, oh, well, I'm never going to come back. Like, you don't see me being one of those bitches to move back to their hometown and guess oh, what yeah. the fuck she did. <laughs> oh, so, no. Which, like, is no shame at all. And, like, that's absolutely something, not. And that's something I had to learn is, like, there is absolutely no shame in returning um, to somewhere that you used to live. and um, Or that, like, other people would, like, deem as, like, not the place to live. Right, exactly. Like, I'm I happy here. And, like, you know, there are so many things that I wouldn't have if I weren't here. Like, the people I have met and, um, you know, my boyfriend now that I have. Like, I wouldn't have met mm -hmm. him if I didn't stay here. And um, there's a lot of things I'm really grateful yeah. for about this area. Do you follow the Instagram account um, Queer Appalachia? I don't. Oh, everyone go follow them. But, like, they, like, one of their big critiques is, like, it's the idea of, like, that... The, the queer life is somewhere in like a metropolitan area. Yeah. Like it, like you absolutely have to be in an Atlanta or an LA or a Chicago or somewhere right. with a booming gay scene to be a valid <laughs> queer person. And it's like, not nah, like the majority of queer people live in the country. Yeah. Because you know why the majority of people do not live in cities. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that's, that is literally just yeah. pure mathematics. Right. And so it's really important for us to like, allow ourselves to be our queer selves wherever we are and like cultivate inclusive community yeah. in every single space we're in regardless Absolutely. of like where we're at right and i think the farther you get outside of a city the more there is a need for that inclusive space too because like i mean not that all cities and areas are always going to be like the most like accepting places but like I think definitely the farther you get outside of that, it's going to be a little harder to pick that out. So if you can make that community for yourself, like that's yeah. perfect. Cause like, I think about, I always tell people the only thing wrong with Atlanta, I mean, besides like racism and all that other stuff, <laughs> but like besides that one little thing. Right. Right. Just, yeah. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, besides those things, um, the only problem with Atlanta is it's surrounded by Georgia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, um, because like it's the, I remember like <laughs> me, uh, me and my friend Miles, I talk, I've been talking a lot about Miles today, apparently Miles <laughs> on the brain. Um, we, we got, I got a little toasty last night and was, so maybe that's why. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, um, we were coming back from a pride festival that I was working in a, like a small town 
and we were driving through this one area and I was like, should I stop here for gas? And sh- and I was like still wearing like my short shorts and rainbow and painted nails and yes. Miles Miles just looks queer. <laughs> it's just like it's just like it's like and like Miles is also a brown man, so like mm-hmm. watch out. Uh in, in the South. Um, yeah, but yeah. He's, and he's like, Miles, Miles said, Kevin, look at yourself, look at me, and think about where we are. Do you think that we are safe here? I don't think we are safe here. I think we should keep driving. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm like, that's real. Yeah. And then I, so, lulzies. We oh love gosh. living in the South. Yeah, I love just being unsafe casually. <laughs> uh, it's very it's very strange like it's it's really like hit or miss because like mm-hmm. I've got a beard and so like if I'm not like like I can present like a very very male passing but just like you know I don't always want to do that because sometimes I want to put on a black lip and wear a skirt yeah and sometimes I do but I tell you what like those are the days that I'm very conscious of where I am and who is around me and who yes. can observe me right absolutely because there's been more than one time where someone has accosted me or like, you know, stared me down or like, I'm like, okay, is this person going to beat me up right now? Yeah. Well, guess totally. I know. Yeah, definitely. I get a little bit of that up in Albany too. Um, not like, I mean, it's honestly mostly during the summertime um, because in mm-hmm. the winter, like I'm just kind of like bundled up and nobody can see anything that I wear. Um, <laughs> but like, but summertime, you are a glitter parade. Is yeah, what? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, summertime, like the short shorts come out, the crop tops come out, and like as they should. Like, exactly, it's the it's the time for that. Um, but yeah, and also like, uh, don't have a car, so um, public transportation is always fun when you're just mm. like fully like queering it up outside and. Um, <sighs> Yeah, I definitely have had my share of run-ins, um, as I'm sure you could relate to in various mm. other different parallels and pieces of living mm. in the South and all that jazz. <laughs> <sighs> Isn't it fun just to share our oppression together? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Good old bond, uh, um, trauma bonding. Is that, is that what they call that? Uh, is that what the kids call it Yeah, these something, days? Like, no. something like something no, like that. Like I'll, I'll go get. I'll ask the kids on TikTok. We'll They'll get, know. I'll ask the kids on TikTok. They'll okay, right? perfect. Is that the thing? Awesome. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're my mental um, health resource. So, oh, apps, fantastic. Okay, I know that we probably have to get going in a little bit. Um, so before we hang up, please tell humans on the internet where they can connect with you, find your work, hire you to speak about gay stuff and and black stuff and yeah. everything else. Absolutely, yeah. So um, if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Joe Minor TLDR. Um, I also have a website, JoeMinorTLDR.com. You can find me. Um, if you really want to be that bitch to be like, oh, I heard he was celibate one time, uh, you can find archive stuff about that too. Um, and But please just realize that um, it's a progression. So read through my blogs oh if, my you really, if, if you must. Um, but Let me tell you what. After I switched over to Squarespace, I, d- I got rid of so much of my old stuff because I was like, who yeah. like let me tell you what being an internet human gives you a front row seat to your own evolution it is yes. really something absolutely it is and yeah. i kind of let like personally like i i've debated um i've taken down a lot of my stuff there's some stuff that i've kept just because of that like i am just proud of where i've come from and again mm-hmm. like kind of what we were talking about you don't you can't just throw out everything um so i've tried to keep mm-hmm. the good stuff but i'm sure there is stuff that exists out yeah. there that i wouldn't be proud of today so. yeah well of course but i yeah. will say like having that like if you were to like i'm thinking like what if like these became some sort of like oh i'm gonna publish my journals and just like yeah. so can see like how i changed my mind right that could be really interesting yeah definitely uh, okay sorry that's my entrepreneur brain going no you're good <laughs> Joe, thanks for being on the show. We really need to like hang out and kiki again because it's been way too long, obviously. If you want to connect with Joe across social media, he's at the Joe Miner, and you can find his blog at Joe Miner T L D R. That's like Joe Miner too long didn't read. dot com. So that's Joe Miner T L D R. dot com. The 
Joe Miner across the social needs, that's it. And also go look at his shaved head that apparently I am gooped over because I can't stop looking at how very, very attractive that picture is. Joe, like, I didn't know that you were also going to cause the people to thirst in this wilderness place. Also, Joe is a kept man. I gotta not do this. <laughs> Anyways, Joe, again, thank you. And also a big thank you to, perfect little segue, thank you to my patrons on Patreon for helping support this incredible thing called A Tiny Revolution. These conversations, the, the videos that are coming out, uh, the media that we're creating together, every single bit that y'all contribute to that uh, is helping, you know, honestly pay my bills so that I can continue to create content at a full time. Like I have, I, I launched this past year into being a coach and a content creator and I've really been so thankful for the steady folks on Patreon for helping me keep, like even in the darkest of times, y'all have kept me above water. So I really got to thank you. We've been really, really consistent, like I said, on a lot of the rewards, including mugs, including stickers, including monthly workshops, including Monday morning Miracle Club. It's really starting to shape into a really cool community. So if you've got an extra five bucks a month, I would love for you to come on over to patreon.com slash the Kevin Garcia and learn how you can make this content and other stuff like it more possible. And I think that kind of wraps it up. So uh, follow me across the internet at the Kevin Garcia. Leave us a review in Apple Podcasts. Until next time, be sure to take your meds, drink your water, move your body in a way that feels good. Tell somebody that you love them and make sure you tell yourself you love yourself. And we'll see you next time on A Tiny Revolution. Bye, babe.